Harper in Northeast Ohio for high school football. And uh, this one promises to be a lot of fun tonight, folks. You uh, are going to really get a chance to see two of the elite programs or I should say here, you're going to hear. You're not going to see much. You'll see, this is what you're going to see tonight. That's going to be your angle tonight. It's our what we call our ambient shot. But you will hear um, tremendous football tonight. The Chardon Hilltoppers are the defending state champions in Division Three. while the Kenston Bombers, uh, they won the championship in 2018. So two of the last three state champions in Division Three on display tonight. As we said, both teams coming in at 5-0. and Let's start with the Bombers as we look at uh, these two teams. Kenston, after having that state championship win in 2018, made the playoffs again in 2019, really affected by COVID last year. The game cancellations and ended up having, a, 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 a for them, a below-par record. But now yeah, everything is... At least a little normal now, I think, for Jeff Grubich and company. And they have played well despite having injuries in the first five weeks of the season. They've come in at a perfect 5-0. and uh, Some late notes for you. J.P. Germano will start at quarterback tonight for the Bombers. Nico Giorgio has been dealing with an injured right hand. Uh, they had hoped to get him ready for tonight. He's missed the last two games, but uh, he will not be ready to go tonight. He was in street clothes during warm-up. So Germano, who started the year as a wide receiver, uh, will again be thrust into the role at quarterback. All Germano's done the last two weeks is rush for 464 yards against East Lake North and Lake Catholic and score four touchdowns. So I think the Bombers feel like they're still in pretty good hands, even without Giorgio. What it's going to mean is Kenston's going to want to be more of a running team than what we're used to seeing. They've really, if, if you're, if you haven't followed the Bombers. Over the last couple of years, they've kind of transitioned a little bit from Air Tom Kufzik. And I remember Jack Porter was a great running back on those championship teams. But uh, they really are a little bit more of a running team now anyway. But with J.P. Germano at the controls and sophomore running back Sean Patrick, um, running will be the priority tonight for the Bombers. And when you talk about the Chardon Hilltoppers, you talk about a program that is the master of the wing T. We saw it last week with Buckeye and, and, and with Valley Forge. Really more Valley Forge than Buckeye in the game we did last week at, at uh, Byers Field. But the Hilltoppers love the wing T that Mitch Hewitt has used it basically since he's been here. And Alex Henry operates the offense. They can throw. There's no doubt about it. That's... I think has elevated Chardon from a good team to an elite team over the last couple of years, besides the fact that they play superb defense, is that they've added the passing dimension to the wing T, and it's enabled them to keep opponents off balance. Now, Alex Henry's the quarterback. He's had a good year running the football. He already has 10 rushing touchdowns in five games. And you'll hear me call a number of different backs tonight. Remember, the wing tee, uh, you, you're following the football, not the, the fakes. So it's a, it's a challenge for the defense. It's a challenge for fans. And every now and then, the challenge for the broadcaster. But Daniel Pettyjohn, you know, it, you wouldn't be the Chardon Hilltoppers without a, a Pettyjohn. You know, we, we, we really enjoyed watching James over the last couple of years. And now it's Daniel's turn as one of the running backs, Sean Carr, back this year as the fullback. He's off to a good start. Uh, they'll run it to Nathaniel Sulka from time to time. They'll run it to Trey Liebart. They'll run it to Ryan Peterson, Rocco Perico. It doesn't really matter. I mean, they, they keep the opponent off balance, and the ability to ball handle is big. So that kind of sets the stage. Kenston won the toss and elected to receive. Jeff Grubich wants the football right away. Grubich in his 10th year as the head coach of the Bombers, 65 wins, 37 losses. Mitch Hewitt, his 11th year with the Hilltoppers, 87 wins, 31 losses. Two outstanding programs, undefeated, two tremendous coaches. This is going to be a lot of fun tonight. Carson rivera Gabo back deep to receive for the Bombers as one of the better kickers in the area. Nathan Tager will kick it off. And if you're we're seeing, again, we can, we can show you by OHSA rules, we can't do a, a, a video 
of this game, we're allowed to show you an ambient shot, and that's basically what you're seeing from my vantage point uh, at about the 35-yard line uh, on looking over from Kenston's side. Um, there's a brand-new playing surface here at Shard Memorial Stadium. The Hilltoppers, I believe, this is either their first or their second game at this stadium this season. As they got this new field in, they've got a brand-new scoreboard. I think everybody who covers, you know, the, the my favorite region, Region 9, is hoping that at some point this stadium gets a press box uh, that will have ample room for the media and be inside. And, and, you know, it's an honor to come here. I love Chardon, but I'm hoping at some point, please, let's get a press box here. That's my soapbox of the night. Um, you know, I, I absolutely, Chardon has no bigger fan than yours truly, and it is uh, one of the best atmospheres in football. But, um, you know, being under a tent, being in a press box, you don't want to miss this game tonight. It's a privilege to be here. All right, ready to go. Hilltoppers, Bombers. Kenston is looking for their first win over Chardon since 2017. It has been a long time in coming. Tagger kicks off. Tonight's game underway. They will angle it on the near side. It's caught at the 10-yard line. That's Simmons to the 20, finds a hole to the 30, then lost the football. Let's see if he got it back. Kenston says they got it back. And I think the officials agree, and it will be Bomber football. All right, Lucas Simmons had it stripped away from him as he was trying to cross the 30-yard line. And very, very fortunate that the Bombers did not lose possession. They'll put it at the Kenston 29 first and 10. J.P. Germano will start at quarterback. Sean Patrick at running back. Tamir Cardona, Carson rivera Gabo will be the receivers. Also, Thomas O'Brien. Check the rest of the starters here in a moment. Just getting underway on a beautiful night here in Geauga County. At the Kenston 29, Germano on the shotgun, first and 10. Gets the snap, he'll give, it's Patrick, and Patrick will cross the 30 and take it to the 31-yard line, essentially where uh, that fumble took place a few moments ago. Gain of two, it'll be a second down and eight. On the offensive line for the Bombers, Cale Doyle at left tackle. He's a good one, 6'3", 295 pounds. Connor Klusner at left guard. Garrett Euler at center. Sean Doyle is the right guard. Luke Legraff is the right tackle. Second down and eight. Germano's got to fight the sun as he peeks over to get this play call in from the Kenston sideline. Don't have a play clock here, but it's starting to run down. They'll go to Patrick on second down, finds a hole, spins to the 35 and out to the 37, maybe the 38-yard line. Going to be a little bit short of the first down. It'll be about a third and one. Chardon operates out of a 4-3 defense. Christian Hall, Cooper F uh, Felger, excuse me, Michael Washington, and Alex McDonald are up front. Heath Fetchick. Brody Dotson and Rocco Perico are the linebackers. A.J. Bruce, Trey Liebard are the corners. Nathaniel Solka, Leo uh, Columby, the safeties. Third and about a yard. There's movement along the lines. There was some confusion there from Kenston as I think they were trying to get that play. And one of the setbacks next to Germano moved, and that's going to result in a five-yard penalty. Just one of those situations you're trying to move to get the, the, the call in. I think that was Cohen Clark, the freshman back, who's in there along with Patrick and Germano in the shotgun. And this late afternoon, early evening sun is playing some havoc here for Kenston, trying to get their signals. Now it's third down and six back at the Bomber 33. Germano is ready, gets the shotgun snap, spins left, in trouble, does a little pop pass that's incomplete as... They had Heath Fetchick coming in with Rocco Perico, double linebacker blitz. And Germano did well to get rid of it, but just couldn't get an accurate shovel pass out to Sean Patrick. Fourth down, and we will see Parker Monday to kick it away. And I think that's Fetchick that's going to go back to receive at his own 30-yard line. Germano's been doing... The punt, actually, take that back. Nico Giorgio started the year as the punter, the quarterback. Germano did it for a week or two, but now they're going to try Monday. High snap, it goes over his head. 
to the end zone. Monday's going to pick it up. He's going to get the kick out of there. Well done just to do that. It's going to roll at the 50 and into Hilltopper territory at the 47-yard line. Parker Monday just bailed his team out with an excellent effort to go back and get that football. Jeff Grubich, head coach, first person to greet his kicker punter as uh, he came off the field. It's an outstanding job by punter Parker Monday to even get it away, much less get it to the Chardon side of the field. But the Hilltoppers with good field position at their own 47, ready to go. Alex Henry operates the offense on first down, and they'll go underneath in that wing tee and very little running room on first down. Sean Carr, the fullback, was the ball carrier, swarmed under by the Bombers, second down and nine. So give him a gain of one. We're under 10 minutes to play here in the first quarter. No score at Chardon. Dave DiNatale with you, our WKYC Game of the Week presented by Chick-fil-A. Shotgun for Henry, second down and nine. He'll shift Carr next to him to the left and send a man in motion. Fake to him, he faked to Peterson. Henry kept it, got it into bomber territory uh, to about the, I think I marked this, at about the 47 yard line of Kenston. It'll bring up a third down and about three. So a gain of five there for quarterback Alex Henry. Henry this year has rushed for 390 yards. Averaging about five yards a carry, he has scored, as I said in the pregame, 10 touchdowns. Third and three now for the Hilltoppers. This time Alex Henry will go under center. He's got two wings, one to each side. Carr, the man in the backfield. Peterson in motion, and we've got whistles. And somebody took a jump there, and I think it was Chardon. Much like we just saw a few moments ago with Kenston committing that penalty on third and short. Now it's Chardon's turn, and they'll go back to their side of the field, and it'll be a third down and eight back at their 48. Nathaniel Sulka is the wide receiver. Alex McDonald, the tight end. Sean Carr, the fullback. Daniel Pettyjohn and Ryan Peterson thus far have been the backs, but as I said, we'll, we'll see a number of different ball carriers tonight for Mitch Hewitt's Hilltoppers. Adam Jackson, the left tackle. Simon Rodriguez, the left guard. Aiden Ishe is the center. Logan Bryan at right guard. And T.J. Altman, a right tackle. Five new starters on that offensive line from last year's state championship team. Third and a long eight. They'll go to Carr, running left side. And Carr with a nice running room there inside the 45 and down to the Bomber 43 for a first down. At least it's a first down from my vantage point here. It's a kind of an off center here. Now they actually they marked it at the 44. I apologize. It looked like... They were going to mark it a first down. It's going to be fourth down and about a yard or so. Lucas Simmons on the tackle for the Bombers from his safety spot. Fourth and one for Chardon at the Kenston just inside the Bomber 45. 8.27 to go, first quarter, no score. Out of the wing tee, Henry under center. Hard count, and he'll give to Petty John, I believe, and that should be enough for a first down as Petty John will take it forward to the 41-yard line. Now check that, it was Carr. With that wing tee, you turn and you, and you fake to one back. You basically have three options as a quarterback a lot of times. You fake to the guy slanting, you fake to a tailback, and then you either give to a fullback or you keep to yourself. First down, Hilltoppers at the Kenston 41. Peterson in motion. Henry will swing left side, in trouble. He'll be trapped in the backfield at the 45-yard line. Cornerback Logan Toft came in and makes that TFL. That's a loss of about four on first down. Kenston out of the 3-4 defense, Daniel Jones, Aiden Vanderbilt, and Jack Novak up front, although we'll see a little bit of Kale Doyle, especially in certain run situations. Brandon Krupp. Charlie Cress, Carson rivera Gabo, and Ben DeMarco, the linebackers. Toff, Heiju are the corners. Simmons and Kowalski are the safeties. Germano normally would be a safety, but going to watch his reps here tonight. And before the Hilltoppers can run it on second and 14, another false start. Back it up five, and it's now going to be a second down and 19. Ball back to Kenston's 49-yard line. And 
And that's a Nick Kowalski and Lucas Simmons watching them at safeties. Yeah, again, Germano started the season as a wide receiver and a safety, but uh, limiting his reps other than a quarterback requires some changes. Second and 19. Here's Henry to throw. Has time. Fires deep down the middle. Looking for Sulka. Got it at the 20. To the 10. He's to the 5 and in. Touchdown. Chardon Hilltoppers. On a second and 19, Alex Henry hooks up with Nathaniel Sulka for a 49-yard touchdown. And the Hilltoppers have a 6-0 lead. Now, again... The misconception about Chardon is they're a wing T team. They can't throw the football. That was a beautifully thrown ball by Alex Henry and Nathaniel Sulka, 6'4", 205 pounds. He is a Youngstown State commit. He's got terrific athletic skills both sides of the ball. A big target with speed. He made that catch at the 15 and then bounced off of a bomber to take it in for the touchdown. Extra point, Nathan Tager, good. 6.53 to go, opening quarter. Chardon 7, Kenston nothing. And it's amazing how things can change. You know, if you're, if you're Kenston, you're feeling, boy, we're backing up the bomb, we're, the Hilltoppers, you know, they're shooting themselves in the proverbial foot with a couple of penalties. You know, we really have a chance to make, cause some damage. And then the next thing you know, on a second and 19, they risked the long pass, but Alex Henry put it beautifully on the numbers to Nathaniel Sulka. So Hilltoppers strike first and lead seven to nothing. So Tager will kick off. You've got Simmons and Cardona standing at the 10, and then Rivera Gabo at his one. This is the uh, the difference, though. Kenston committed a false start penalty on their first offensive drive, and they couldn't overcome it. Chardon was able to overcome a couple of hankies and convert a touchdown. And a lot of that started with the field position off that bad snap on the punt. As the kick will be fielded, Gabo's got it at the three, out to the 10, middle of the field, 15, dives forward to the 20 and down at the 21-yard line. That is where the Hilltop, or make the, the Bombers will begin first down and 10. So the second possession of this first quarter for the Kenston Bombers. We said the WKYC Game of the Week is presented here in Week 6 by Chick-fil-A, home of the original chicken sandwich. Stop by your neighborhood Chick-fil-A in Cleveland, Akron, Canton. Tell them we sent you. Bring us a chicken sandwich. We, well, we, we appreciate that. <laughs> First and 10 here for the Bombers. Now trailing it 7 to nothing. Germano from the shotgun sends Rivera Gabo right to left. Germano off the Wildcat. He'll pick, he'll weave to the 25 and takes it out to the 26 yard line. Michael Washington, the defensive tackle, on the stop for the Hilltoppers. And that'll be gaining close to five on first down. We'll call it six as they marked it at the 20, so second down and four over at the left hash. Kenson's got trips now, wide receivers left side, including Jimmy Richmond. One receiver right, Germano will send Patrick in motion, give it to him, swinging right side, goes to the 30 and should have enough for a bomber first down. No shortage. Yeah. <laughs> Without Nico Giorgio, you know, you, you, you would think you're, well, you're limited because you, you've got a quarterback who's not necessarily the best thrower. By the way, Germano's done a pretty good job efficiency-wise. 10 of 19 passing for 87 yards, but it's, there are still plenty of weapons on the Bombers. And the sophomore running back, Sean Patrick, is one of them. He gives them the first down at the 30-yard line. Now, Germano gets that shotgun snap. He'll run straight ahead, and Sulka will close it down right at the 31-yard line. When it looked like there was a hole there for Germano to run through, Sulka just kind of stalked up from his safety position and made the hit for a one-yard game, second down and nine. As we've got a momentary stoppage in play here, 5.23 to go first quarter. 
And the chains haven't moved. That's a, well, I wonder if the chains are stuck there. Oh, wait a minute here. I figured out what happened. Uh, I thought that Patrick had gotten the first down on the previous play. He did not. So now they're going to stretch it and make sure Germano got the first down. Uh, it looked to me from where Sean Patrick had been put down that it was a first down. And now they're saying Germano is short by about half a length of the football. Fourth and, and a foot here. And for the moment, Jeff Grubich is going to send the offense back in. He'll send in 6'3 receiver Thomas O'Brien. You know, you would think here all you're gonna, you'd want to do is just plow straight ahead here. You don't need that much, but you got to make sure you get that forward surge. Otherwise, Chardon's going to have incredibly good field position. Let's see here if Germano just tries to draw them off sides. Or if he's going to go for it. No, quick snap. He'll plow ahead, and the Bombers will indeed get a first down to the 33-yard line. Nice silent snap count there. And J.P. Germano able to plunge ahead for the first down. Brody Dotson, the linebacker on the tackle. First down for Kenston. And, yes, this time I'm sure. I'm telling you, I thought for sure Sean Patrick had a first down. Patrick will go out to a slot on the right side. Four wide receivers, make it five wide receivers as Rivera Gabo will go slot left from his tight end spot now. Five wide, empty backfield. As Germano ready, now Patrick in motion right to left. Little option pitch. Here comes Patrick swinging left side to the 35 and able to get some extra running room out to the 38 yard line. When it looked like there was nothing there for Sean Patrick, he was able to dig out about four yards. Leo. Columby made the tackle. Columby, the sophomore safety already with two picks this year. But uh, Sean Patrick did a nice job getting something out of nothing and picks up four, second down and six. What a crowd, both sides loud here tonight. Germano ready. On second down and six, high snap, pulls down, runs to his right, gets to the 40, and dives ahead near the first down marker once again. As J.P. Germano with those wide receiver cuts, and they're going to mark him near the 42-yard line, a little bit short of the first down. So just inside, you know, past the 41, but uh, they're going to need about a yard and a half here if not a smidge more for the first down. Again, empty backfield for the Bombers. Near their own 42, with about four minutes to go here in the first quarter, Chardon 7-0. Germano tried to go to the option, and this time he was swarmed under Alex McDonald, another Youngstown Penguin, uh, State Penguin commit, able to pinch in from his defensive end spot and trap J.P. Germano for no gain. In fact, he actually lost yardage back to the 40, and this time the Bombers will punt. Chardon's defense was so incredibly good last year in their state championship run. They've lost nine starters from that defense. Sulka and Liebart are the only returners, but so far here tonight, Hilltoppers looking impressive against Kenston. Monday, another high snap goes over his head, all the way back to the 10-yard line. He picks up, punts again, end over end. It will go inside the 50, inside the 40, and down to the 38, near the 37-yard line. Now, I don't know who the, the long snapper is. They don't give that to me in my stats, but that's uh, two high long snaps, and Jeff Grubich is going to have to figure out something else here because they cannot afford to have field position get flipped like this. Now, the good news is Chardon is inside their own 40 near the 36-yard line, but back-to-back -back high snaps over Parker Monday's head, and both times he's done well to get rid of it. 3.03 to go, first quarter, 7-0 Chardon. They've got the football at their own 36, and they'll go on the ground, and 
Officials are going to blow it dead. And I think there'll be yet another false start against the Hilltoppers. That's the third, I think, of this first quarter. Let's back it up five, make it first and 15 back near the 32. Chardon with a 49-yard touchdown pass from Alex Henry to Nathaniel Sulka. And they've got the lead, 7 to nothing. First and 15. Ball now back at their own 32. Again, Henry ready to go with a shotgun. Gives Peterson. Swings left side and brought down back at the 30-yard line. Kenston read it beautifully. David Clawson was able to come in and bear down to make that stop. And that's going to be a loss of about two and make it a second and 17. Last time Chardon was facing this kind of a second and long type play, they converted it into a bomb touchdown. You would think this time Kenston would be ready. Second and 17, Henry to the shotgun. Bombers show blitz, Petty John in motion. Henry's going to throw, looks for Carr left side incomplete at the 35-yard line. Was pretty well covered anyway as Nick Kowalski was over there on the coverage. Third and 17. Also Braden Krupp, the linebacker in the vicinity for the Bombers. This is a big here, big here for Kenston. They've got to get off the field on this third and long situation. And Nathaniel Sulka, who has the game's lone touchdown on a 49-yard catch, is in there now, and he'll flank out wide left. Wings to each side. Henry on the shotgun, ready to go on third and long. They'll just go on the ground, and it's pretty well read by the Bombers as they'll make the tackle at the 30-yard line, trying to swing left end. Get the license plate number of that ball carrier. And I think it was Peterson. That was well read by the Bombers. No gain on the play as the ball will remain at the 30-yard line, 4th and 17. And Alex McDonald will kick it away. Kowalski and Simmons in double safety near their own 35-yard line. Good snap for McDonald, gets the kick away. High spiral, fair catch made by Kowalski at his own 32-yard line, and the Bombers will start there with the minute 34 to go. First quarter here at Chardon Memorial Stadium. 7-0 Hilltoppers on top of the Bombers. 5-0 versus 5-0 here in the Western Reserve Conference. And... They're also the number one and number two teams in Division Three Region 9. As I declared earlier this week uh, with Tyler Carey on our preview show on Wednesday, uh, my favorite region in all of high school football in Ohio. Whenever you can get, you're talking Chardon, Kenston, Aurora, West Geauga, who we saw earlier this year, Streetsboro, who... You know, we, we thought tonight we actually might be at uh, Streetsboro seeing the Rockets play Norton. Um, and that's just in our kind of our area. He's talking talk about New Philadelphia. Some good teams, competitive teams. Kenston ready to go from the 30. Germano gets the snap in the Wildcat. And short yardage, maybe a one to the 33. And that's really about it. Kind of slow developing as JP was looking for uh, an alley to run into. Lucas Simmons came over to close out the play. It'll be second and nine as we approach a minute to go here in this first quarter. Cohen Clark will check out. Jimmy Richmond in at wide receiver. Not having Germano as a receiver, Jeff Grubich has had to go to the underclassmen, and they have done well so far. In motion is Patrick. Germano will keep it and has no room to run this time as he tried to swing to the right. And it was well defended by the Hilltoppers. And actually, they're going to mark it for a two-yard loss back to the 31. So now it's going to bring up a third down and 11. 30 seconds to go in this opening quarter. 
Chardon seven, Kenston nothing. Bombers will have to run at least one more, one more play here before the end of the quarter. And they're gonna have to hurry here. 15 seconds on the game clock. No idea what the huddle clock is. Third and 11, Germano looks to throw. Launches one to the right and incomplete as Nathaniel Sulka had good coverage on the intended receiver, Tymir Cardona. That will set up fourth down with five seconds to go. And this has been mission impossible for the Bombers in this first quarter to execute a punt snap. They'll try again. It looks like Cale Doyle is the snapper. At least he is on this play. They've had two sail over well over the head of punter Parker Monday, but both times Monday's been able to get it and at the very least not pin his team back. This one's a good snap. Dead on, and Monday's kick. Line drive caught at the 35 and the dead run. Out to the 50, to the 45, to the 40. There he goes. Down those left field to the 20, 15, 10, 5, and cutting in for the touchdown is Heath Fetchick. That's a, about a 65-yard punt return for a touchdown as he caught it on the dead run right at the 35-yard line. No time remaining in the first quarter on the final play. Heath Fetchick, a six foot, 190 pound junior, caught that punt on the dead run. And once he got to the 50, you felt like he had a good chance to bust it all the way in. And he takes it in for the touchdown. So here is the point after for Nathan Tager. Off of the hold of Will Francis. Snap and hold are good. And Tager powers it through. He's kicking that uh, to Auburn. I mean, he absolutely obliterated that extra point. End of the first quarter here at Chardon Memorial Stadium. And the Hilltoppers, with two electrifying plays in the quarter, have a 14-0 lead. 49-yard TD pass. Henry to Sulka, and the punt return for a touchdown, courtesy of Heath Fetchick. And unfortunately, we're not able to, we're not utilizing Zoom, so I'm not able to uh, talk to Tyler Carey, but, but, however, I am able to give you scores, courtesy of TC. First quarter, Norton leading Streetsboro six to nothing. Norton in uh, Region 10, Streetsboro in Region 9. West Holmes on top of Worcester, 14-7. Rocky River leading Bay, 7-0 in the first quarter. Lake Catholic over Padua in the first quarter, 7-0. North Royalton leading Stowe in the first quarter, and that is down at Stowe, 14-0. Aurora Talmadge and Willoughby South and Brush are both scoreless. West Geauga and Buckeye are going to kick off in about three minutes. No Row Nation is going to be loving it. That would be a huge win for the Bears if they could knock off Stowe tonight. You know, we saw them in week two play that grudge match against Highland, and you felt we walked away from that game that night really feeling that. The Bears were going to be were going to improve. That it wasn't a fluke. That they're playing, you know, at a, at a at a higher level than even they were during last year's postseason. But they continue to get better and better for Nick Truly as the season progresses. Tanger will kick off, and again, Simmons back to receive with Rivera, Gabo, and Cardona. Tager gets the kick away. And this one is going to sail to the end zone and be a touchback at the 20-yard line. Rivera Gabo really wanted to bring it out. Official saying, no, son, head to the 20, and it'll be a first down from there. But uh, now all of a sudden for Kenston, at the very least here, they need to get some first downs and keep their defense 
off the field. Now, of course, Shard just got a special teams touchdown, but for anything else, just momentum, it would be a good thing here for the Bombers to put some things together. Let's see the, uh, some of the Shard youngsters coming up here to take in the game. As I'm first down, they'll go on the ground. Patrick's got it. And able to work his way for a yard or two, and that's really about it. Again, that Shard defense really closing in quickly. It'll be second down and about nine. Nathaniel Sulka gets credited for the tackle. Yeah, kind of give you a scouting report on the Shard defense here in a second. Because I, as I was getting ready for the game, yeah, they graduated nine seniors. <laughs> They're still pretty good. We're seeing that so far. Germano out of the Wildcat. We'll run it straight ahead. Finds a little bit of room as he'll take it out near the 25-yard line. Got about four on that run, and it sets up a third and somewhat manageable third and five. Chardon allowing just 11 points per game coming into tonight. 210 yards averaging the opposition in offense per game. Now Michael Washington has four sacks. Alex McDonald has two and a half. Perico has three. Fetchick, who already has a touchdown tonight as a punt returner, he's got five sacks as a linebacker. Third and five here for the Bombers. They'll go five wide. Germano looks, throws over the middle, passes you know, through the hands of a Bomber and then was almost intercepted by a Hilltopper. Columby nearly had the pick as it went through the hands of Rivera Gabo. Germano got that shotgun snap and... You know, Sharn's respecting his running ability, so they're staying home. He kind of stopped in his tracks, just kind of tried to throw a little pop pass, and it was a little too high for Rivera Gabo and was nearly picked by Columby. Fetchick in single safety, pretty much where he was on his punt return. That is 36 to await the snap. Good kick here for Monday, but it's going to take a Kenston bounce. Be picked up by one of the Chardon Hilltoppers very alertly crossing the 50 and taking it to the Kenston 45-yard line was Trey Liebart. That's a heads-up play by Liebart. That ball took a Kenston bounce. It bounced from uh, the Chardon, that's about 40 or 41, and it bounced forward, and I think Kenston just was kind of coming down and, and they were going to see what that ball was going to do and Liebart just pounced on it and took it up for about 10 or 15 yards. Hilltoppers now from the Kenston 45 ready to go. Henry rolls right, throws right, pass caught. Sulka's got it at the 39 yard line and immediately pushed out of bounds there for a gain of six. Again, just you want to keep a defense honest and show that you can throw the ball. And actually, they're going to give Sulka an extra yard to the 38. So we'll call that about a gain of seven on first down. Ten minutes to go, second quarter. Chardon 14, Kenston nothing, and the Hilltoppers are in bomber territory again. Henry will operate from the shotgun, but two men in the backfield. And fakes, no, he'll, yeah, he'll keep it. It's Petty John. Petty John running. And then to actually it was Henry. I thought it was Petty John. They kind of ran next to each other. It doesn't really matter because the ball's going to go inside the 20 yard line. Well executed again by the quarterback, Alex Henry. Had everybody fooled. I thought Petty John had it. And then I thought he had it. And then I thought Petty John had it again. You know, it was Henry all the way down to the 11 yard line. Wow. That is a gain of 27 big ones. Shard knocking on the door again from the Bomber 11. Henry turns, and the give is going to go to Carr, and Carr will take it inside the five and down near the two-yard line. That's actually going to be short of a first down. It, they, can, they can get a first down, actually, without getting a touchdown, at least from where my vantage point is. 
I'm just above. You know, I, I don't have a high level here, so it's hard to see where the ball is precisely. But uh, it's a second and two from the three, they're going to call it. And the give is going to be to Sean Carr, and he'll take it in, standing up for the touchdown. Sean Carr with his fifth touchdown of the season. That's a three-yard run for the Hilltoppers. And they have opened up a 20 to nothing lead with 8.59 to go here in the first half. And this is, I'm on the Kenston side here. Usually when we do these games, they, they put us on the home side. We're on the visitor side here at Chardon. And it is a quiet and somber Bomber faithful right now as Tigger will check in for the extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is good. That kick actually hit the scoreboard. <laughs> they just put the scoreboard in, Nathan. <laughs> 21 to nothing, Hilltoppers with 8.59 to go here in the first half. I mean, Chardon has done it just about every way you can here in the half. They have gotten a long pass for a touchdown. They've taken a punt back for a touchdown. And that possession, util utilizing the wing T to perfection on that 28-yard run by Henry to help set up the touchdown run for Sean Carr. And meanwhile, the defense tonight for the Hilltoppers has been suffocating. As Kenston, I mean, they've got a, they've gotten a couple of first downs here, but they just they haven't been able to sustain anything. And the problem, they, right now, they they cannot push Chardon's uh, defense back here to open up enough holes. And because of the injury and Germano essentially acting as the Wildcat quarterback, you know, it's it's they're not one dimensional, but they're kind of one dimensional right at the moment, and it's making things difficult. As Tagger will kick it off, and again, you've got Cardona, Rivera Gabo, and Simmons all back deep to receive. Tagger will try to kick this one in the Lake Erie if he can. It's another high kick, and Rivera Gabo backpedals when he makes the catch. Literally, he catches it at the one, but your momentum backpedals you to the end zone, and once that happens, the official will always blow the play dead and mark you at the 20. When you have a kicker, it's and, and both teams have excellent kickers, by the way. Parker Monday, who has a 49-yard field goal already this year, and Nathan Tager are, are both excellent weapons because you not only have the added option of field goals for your offense, but their kickoffs can pin you deep. And in this case, I mean... Most of Kenston's possessions have started at the 20. I think they started one at the 30 on a Simmons return, but it's been pretty much starting at the 20 every time. Germano on first down will go to the right, and that's going to be a loss of five back to the 15-yard line. As just had nowhere to go with it. Sean Patrick, the ball carrier. That's going to be another TFL for Chardon. They've had a couple of those tonight. Second and 15. Yeah, I, th I think anybody had any questions about the Hilltopper defense, to this point they've been answered. I'll just say loss of four to the 16, second and 14. Germano tries a little bubble screen, and Sean Patrick is in big trouble, able to at least get back to about the 14. yard line. lost the ball. Chardon picks it up and goes in for the touchdown. Patrick was trying to get out of bounds, lost the handle, and the Hilltoppers recover for six. We'll see who's going to get credited for the recovery. Yeah, the, the sophomore just trying to make a play, and it had looked like he was on his way to get back some of those lost yards, and like a hot potato, it just kind of squibbed out from under him. And Chardon scooped it up and took it in for six. I'm waiting for the PA to tell me who got the touchdown. We have not gotten that indication here, but 
Chardon's defense now with a touchdown. The offense has scored two touchdowns, and special teams has put one in the end zone. Tagger for the extra point, up, in, and he hits the scoreboard again. 8-14 to go in the second quarter. It was 7-0 Chardon with five seconds to go before the end of the first quarter. And then you had the punt return for a touchdown by Fetchick. And that took us to the end of the first quarter. And now already, we haven't even played four minutes in the second quarter, and Chardon has put 14 more on the board. A car touchdown run, and then a fumble recovery for a touchdown. And the Bombers are in all kinds of trouble right now. As Tanker will kick it off. And this has been a familiar sight tonight for the Hilltoppers to have him kick off. Again, you've had a, a special teams touchdown, a defensive touchdown, and two on the offensive side. That tells you what the Hilltoppers have been able to put together here tonight. All right, Tanger going to kick it off, and we'll do it again. 28 to nothing, Chardon. And this kick is <laughs> Rivera Cabo took about two steps up and said, I got no chance to catch that one out of the end zone touchback. Yeah, Tagger is a good one. He really, really is. So now... Bombers will go back on offense here at the 20. Mitch Hewitt's defense tonight has been outstanding. And I mentioned in the pregame against East Lake North and Lake Catholic, J.P. Germano running out of this Wildcat racked up nearly 500 yards over the last two weeks, so a little under 250 average and four touchdowns. As on first down, he looks to throw, pressured, rolls right, drops the football, and Chardon picks it up. Hilltoppers have it at about the three-yard line. From bad to worse for Kenston. Unbelievable. J.P. Germano was pressured, was being sacked, and had it stripped away from him. I think it might have said Perico was uh, there on the recovery. First and goal at the two. Unbelievable turn of events in this second quarter. And the Hilltoppers against their rivals. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to hold anything back right now. Carr, the lone man in the backfield. Henry goes under center. Wings to each side. First and goal at the two. Petty John in motion. Give Sean Carr. Was, was initially stood up and then was able to plunge ahead in for another Hilltopper touchdown. Two yards for Sean Carr, his second of the night. And Chardon with a commanding 34 to nothing lead. Eight minutes to go, first half. I'll tell you, I coming into this, it didn't see this coming at all. Did not see this kind of a domination coming at all. Tager for the extra point. And it's been target practice against that scoreboard every time they go in. This time he just kicked it over the, the stands that time. Kick is good. 35-0 Chardon with exactly eight minutes to go here in the second quarter. Brody Dotson was on that fumble recovery touchdown. Thank you, uh, or a little bit earlier. Thank you, TC. Yeah, we're kind of out here on the, uh, the visitor side, away from everything. Uh, it's hard to spot here. 
So my man TC able to work social media for me. That's why he, even though he's not able to pop up on Zoom, that's why he is the best color man in high school football, folks. 35-0. <laughs> so credit the touchdowns tonight. Carr has two. Henry has thrown a touchdown pass to Sulka. Dotson has a fumble recovery for a touchdown. So we will duly note that. And his linebacker mate, Heath Fetchick, has taken a punt back for a touchdown tonight. You know, you... Kenston came in as the number one team in Region 9, Chardon number two. This is a, uh, a fierce rivalry. And you really thought that it was going to be a grudge match here tonight as this kick is going to again sail to the end zone for a touchback. <laughs> Tyler Carey, you're always better than uh, Monty, the color man, buddy. Uh, but this has been a second quarter, 21 points in four, exactly four minutes on the clock. There have been 21 points. And I'll do you one better. Four minutes and five seconds. Count the five seconds at the end of the first quarter. And the Hilltoppers have scored 28 points in four minutes and five seconds. That's how quickly this has turned into a route. Ball again will start at the 20. Germano will go on a jet sweep to the right. And cutting back left is Cardona. And Cardona to the 25 and ran about 20 yards to get about five. But that jet sweep initially was designed to go to the right. Nothing doing there as it was closed down by Christian Hall on his defensive end spot. So Cardona was able to find some running room running left. And he gets five. It'll be second and five. But that's indicative of how it's been. You know, Tymir Cardona had to absolutely run a mile to get five yards. Germano on the shotgun. He'll shift Sean Patrick to his right on second and five. And Cardona will be moved a couple of steps in as he's flanked out wide right. Three receivers for the Bombers. Germano will do the option to uh, Patrick, and he is smothered back at the 20-yard line for no gain. And actually lost five because Nathaniel Sulka, who's been everywhere so far, came up for that TFL. Loss, 05. Third and 10 at the 20. I mean, it, it's simple. You know, he, you get the, the, the snap to Germano, and, you know, you're, you're trying to get that, that separation and show a potential pitch or a keep and Sulka just blew it up. The moment Patrick caught the pitch, Sulka absolutely pounded him. One of the two returning starters from last year's state championship team from the defensive side. And he's been everywhere tonight on the uh, both sides of the ball. Third and ten, Germano to throw. Looks, fires left side, and incomplete looking for Cardona at the 35-yard line. Cardona was looking for some contact down there. It was well thrown by Germano, but incomplete. Fourth down and 10, and a bomber punt is forthcoming with 6.02 to go in the second quarter. I mean, this has been unbelievable turn of events. You know, it's like that Murphy's Law that to talk about everything that can go wrong for a team, or in Chardon's case, everything that can go right does go right. Monday gets the good snap and gets the kick away. Fetchik will watch it bounce, and it was touched by a bomber. We've got a flag down. As that time, Nick Kowalski, Kowalski did not want a Chardon Hilltopper to pounce on that football. Legal block is the penalty call against Chardon. That's been their... If you if, if if you can really be critical, and that's you know Mitch Hewitt by the way tomorrow in film session will be, uh, if you can be critical about Chardon in the first half, their only mistakes have been penalties. To be honest, everything else has been letter perfect. 
Mitch Hewitt wanted an explanation from the official. I don't think he was particularly pleased with what was said. And uh, Alex Henry and the Hilltoppers will have to start now from their own 39 with 5.53 to go here in the second quarter. 35-0 Chardon. And timeout taken by Kenston. And you know what this is? This is Jeff Grubich bringing his 11 guys on defense together and, you know, saying, hey, listen, enough is enough. And it's, you know, trying to kind of, you know, he, and, and, and coach wanted to say whatever he is he wanted to say. Then he took a couple steps back and let his defensive coaches kind of fill in the gaps. But I, I, I think they just wanted to talk to the 11 guys who have just kind of watched this thing go completely south and try to talk them up here a little bit. It's too good of a team, too good of a program to, to you know, feel like they're getting ha handled like this. And I think it's, you know, it's trying to kind of get everybody back into a good frame of mind here. All right, so out of the timeout, first and 10 upcoming here for the Hilltoppers at their own 39. Again, it was 7 to nothing, Chardon with five seconds to go in the first quarter. Since that point, everything has gone the way of the Hilltoppers. Sulka will go out wide left here on our near side. Two wings in the backfield. Henry under center. Carr the deep man. Henry rolling left. Looks. Hit as he tries to throw and it's incomplete. As I think that was Braden Krupp who made the hit there. And it'll be second down and ten. And it's one of those things, you know, it, it, it's, you know, Mitch Hewitt understands. He's got his opponent on the ropes. And that's an opportunity, even after a timeout, to to take a shot, and that's what that was there. Second down and 10, 5.49 to go here in the first half. Petty John and Peterson are the wings, Carr the deep man, and now McDonald, the tight end, will shift left to right. Henry under center, second down and 10, and he's gonna give, that ball's gonna go to the right to the 45 and out. Two out the 47-yard line, and then as the ball carrier was going down, the ball popped loose, and the Bombers have it. I think it was Liebart, the ball carrier, and lost the handle, and it will be Kenston football. For the first time tonight, Kenston is going to have the ball in Chardon territory as they will take over at the 49 of the Hilltoppers. I did not see who got credit for the uh, recovery there, but uh, Kenston able to kind of snuff it out and force that turnover. So 5.41 to go here in the first half. And really for the first time tonight, Kenston can feel good. They forced the turnover. Now Germano ready to go. Patrick to his left. They will give to him. He'll run to the right. He gets to the 50, 45, 40. Patrick to the 30. Patrick to the 25. Inside the 20 and finally down at the 17-yard line. And for the first time tonight, there is a good offensive play for Kenston, but it's going to be for naught. Penalty flag. And I believe it's a hold against the Bombers. I was just going to say, good job by the offensive line to clear out the right side for Sean Patrick, but uh, they had some help. Holding is indeed the call, so let's see where they mark this. Ten yards from the spot. It's going to be back around the 45 of the, of the uh, Hilltoppers, I should say. So if anything, they picked up four yards. It's going to be first... Uh, and about, let's see, first and six? Yeah, first and six. And this time Germano fakes to Patrick, will keep it, got to the 44, and then got pushed back big time. Solka, and also, I 
think that was Christian Hall on the stop. They'll, they'll give him to the 45, so really no gain on the play. It's going to be second down and six. Under five minutes to go here in this first half. Kenston, after the fumble recovery, trying to make something happen on offense for the first time tonight. Sean Patrick will stand to J.P. Germano's right. Four wide receivers. And Germano keeps, kind of picks and weaves, and they got popped at about the 43-yard line. And I mean popped as he found some running room and then ran right square into Leo Columby. What a stick by the sophomore safety. Gain of, we'll call it two. It's probably even less than that. It'll be third down and four. And that's the other thing. Every, when, when Chardon hits you, I mean, you know it. I mean, there's just, everything tonight has just been uh, blunt force. Third down and four. Germano with Patrick to his left, rolling left. Chase from the backside. Tried to throw a pass. It was, I think it was intercepted. As he was just trying to kind of pop it over and it was picked off. It was intercepted by the Hilltoppers. Alex Kisley, the defensive tackle, got that gift. I think Germano, he was probably in the direction of Sean Patrick, but it was just couldn't get it over the, ha the head of 6'2", Alex Kisley, and Kisley came away with the interception. That's three turnovers tonight by the Bombers. And I say tonight in this half. Actually, it's even the go three turnovers in this quarter. And back on offense, here comes Carr. Big hole, 35-30. Big fellow to the 25, to the 20, and down at the 18-yard line of the Bombers. Logan Toft made the touchdown saving tackle, and this is going to be the problem now for the rest of the night. We've got a flag down after the play, as I have a feeling we're going to have some talking going on here both sides. And the officials are going to have to maintain order. It, it came well after the play, so some kind of unsportsmanlike conduct or late hit or something to that effect. Unsportsmanlike on Chardon. So you, you, you would assume trash talking. And that is going to make Mitch Hewitt's blood pressure go up a few points. Ball will go to the 32-yard line. That ends up being, you know, it's a 15-yard penalty. Yeah, from the 17-yard line. Can't have that. Henry will shift to the shotgun. Carr will shift left side. Henry keeps the shotgun snap, runs to his right, and got pushed out of bounds. Ooh, and Nick Kowalski pushed him out of bounds and got lucky he didn't get called for a late hit as he kind of kept kind of shoving and shoving Henry out of bounds. They'll mark Henry inside the 25 to about the 22-yard line. New set of downs. And they'll go on the ground. Petty John will take it down to the 15-yard line. Got seven on first down. 3.20 to play here in this first half. If you're just joining us, it was 7-0 with five seconds to go in the first quarter. Chardon. And they have then put up 28 to answer that and lead it 35 to nothing. Henry with some nice moves inside the 15. 10-5 touchdown. Alex Henry on the keeper. And there's a Kenston Bomber who is down back in the backfield at the 15-yard line as Alex Henry gets his 11th rushing touchdown of the year. And... Uh, the Kenston training staff is sprinting on the field. It did not look good for whoever the young man is who is down. And we'll let you know who that is in a moment. 2.59 to go here in the second quarter, and the Hilltoppers have now opened up a 41 to nothing edge. And, you know, you think about Kenston. One of their, I mean, they're... they're Four-year starter at tight end on his way to Indiana, and a good sign the young man is up on his feet. I think that's Braden Krupp. 
And he is really laboring as he's coming off the field. But able to at least jog off the field under his own power, but he is hurting. Ryan Miller, who has been a starter at tight end since his freshman year when the Bombers won the 2018 state championship, on his way to Indiana University as a tight end for the Hoosiers. And I find that awesome in the fact that he will join another product from my favorite region, Div Region uh, 9, Division 3, A.J. Barner, the former Aurora Greenman, who's a tight end for the Hoosiers. As Tagger for the extra point, up and good, and hits the scoreboard again. They, they need to put a target up there for him. The extra point is good. 42 to nothing, Hilltoppers. Ryan Miller was coming back for his senior year and was off to a great start in the first three games of the year as Kenston was trying to put the finishing touches on a win against Notre Dame Cathedral Latin. NDCL was going for an onside kick. It was 35-23 to 23 at the time, so Jeff Grubich puts in his good, good hands team, as you would imagine, and Miller, your senior tight end, I mean, he would be prime. Germano would be another guy you'd have in there. And as Miller made the, the catch on the onsides and recovered it, he took a shot, uh, took a blow to the back and ended up suffering a couple of fractured vertebrae. The good news for Ryan is, and I talked to him before the game, he's doing well. He had been in a wheelchair for a couple of weeks, but uh, is walking with a cane. The doctors expect he will make a full recovery. He will be on his way to Bloomington. He will play college football um, and, and is in a good frame of mind, although having to watch this tonight, I can imagine, is absolutely killing him right now because you know Ryan's going to think man you know of everything I got to accomplish in my career I didn't get to beat Chardon Taggers kick is going to head into the end zone for another touchback and, and again Carson Rivera Gabo not even going to bother to try to go field that that's how good these kickoffs have been but I spoke to Ryan Miller. He says he's he's doing well, and uh, you know, thanks everybody for their support. Jeff Grubich was saying uh, to John Camp from the News Herald, who's here tonight covering the game. Shout out to Big John, one of the best in the business. Um, that as Miller was being taken off the field by a stretcher to go to the local hospital and got put in the ambulance. You know, Jeff's such a competitive guy. You know, what do you say to your four-year starter, your, your, your senior? Well, Ryan, I'll see you at films tomorrow. Sure enough, Ryan Miller checked out of the hospital, wheelchair and all, and was in films on that Saturday morning after the win over NDCL. As Germano keeps it on first down and will plunge forward for a couple of yards. 42 nothing, Chardon. When we get to the second half, uh, we will be in running clock mode. So... That means uh, we will probably uh, be departing here earlier, much earlier tonight than expected. No gain is the call there for Germano. I thought he had actually gotten a yard or so. Second down and 10. JP will go to Patrick running left side. Tries to swing the corner and can't do it. Not taken out, out of bounds. Right about at the line of scrimmage. The thing is, Chardon's... You know, I, I, I haven't called McDonald, Washington, Felger, and Hall that much tonight. It's been the back seven, but Hall, Felger, Kisley, Washington, and company have done their job. They have pushed Kenston's offensive line back, enabled Fetchick and Dotson and Perico and certainly Sulka and Columby to make big plays in this first half. It's been a team effort on the Chardon defense. That's exactly how. Mitch Hewitt likes it. Third and 11. Back to throw. Germano fires left and pass caught at the 30-yard line right at that first down marker. I believe on the catch was Nick Kowalski. I believe that was a 26 over on the far side. Uh, no, Jimmy Richmond. My eyesight fooled me there. 
<laughs> but Richmond gets the catch, and that's a first down for the Bombers. And all credit for Germano having to be kind of thrust into this role as a Wildcat quarterback. Yeah, he's still th he's thrown some nice passes when he's been able to. That threw another nice one there, but it's incomplete. Just a smidge behind Rivera Gabo going over the middle. You know, Germano's a guy I can remember covering when we would do we did a couple of bomber games in 2019, and he started to get a lot of playing time as you know, you, you still had Mintz and Middleton, but I think JP was kind of the third receiver in that group. Um, and we started watching him play and, and knew we were going to see good things from him in the receiver position. But to have to get kind of thrust into this because of the injury to Nico Giorgio, it's not easy. And he's handled it as well as can be expected. It's just tonight, unfortunately, this Chardon defense has been superb. Germano will keep it and finds a hole, crosses the 35, moves the pile ahead near the 40-yard line. One of JP's best runs of the evening. As obviously right now, I mean, Kenston's just looking, run this, the market at the 39. Kenston just wants to run this thing out here and get at, get to the locker room. There will be very little in terms of X's and O's, I think, for the Bombers being down 42 to nothing. I'm sure the message from Jeff Grubich is going to be, let's, let's win the second half. And carry this thing, you know, and win that and then carry it over for the final three games of the regular season. As on the ground, Patrick will get to that first down marker to the 40 and now near the 41 yard line. Christian Hall with some help from A.J. Bruce on the tackle. As we go now to 42 seconds to play in the second quarter, clock stops momentarily to move the chains. Now it starts up again. Bombers will probably run one more play here and. We'll head to the half. At halftime, you can enjoy the uh, both of the bands here, the Bombers and the Hilltoppers. Chardon's uh, band, it's senior night for the band tonight. And they, they've waited for these uh, last three uh, home games to have their senior ceremonies, the senior night for the band, homecoming and senior night for the, uh, the players too. As Germano lofts one up left. Looking down the field, was almost intercepted. Nice effort by Trey Liebart. As that pass was intended for Cardona, and Liebart almost made an interception falling out of bounds. Trey made one of the biggest plays in Chardon football history, if you remember, in that state championship win last year. He's, he blocked a field goal attempt in overtime. Let's clear the way. Tagger to get the game winner and put Chardon in for their second state championship. They won one in 1994 and again in 2020. Five seconds to go here before halftime. Second and ten bombers at their own 41. Mono looking, firing, lofts one right, and the pass is intercepted at the 40-yard line and down. And it is Liebart. He tried, tried to make the pick on the previous play, got one on that play. That is the fourth turnover in the – I'm going to double check on that, but fourth turnover, I believe, in the second quarter by Kenston. And that, amongst everything else, is why we are at a Chardon 42, Kenston nothing, halftime score. Double, yeah, I'm going to double check that. Uh, heading into uh, the half. But Bombers and the uh, Hilltoppers will bring the bands on the field for halftime. We will let you enjoy that. Uh, we'll check the Tyler Carey scoreboard uh, coming up as well. We remind you, as always, the WKYC Game of the Week presented by Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, the home of the original chicken sandwich. Enjoy halftime, everyone. The WKYC Game of the Week continues right here on WKYC.com, the 3 News app, Facebook Live and YouTube. They turned it over four times in the second quarter. I don't think we're running chart, but I don't think it's right. Yep, four. Two interceptions, two fumbles. Yep. 
But other than that, it was a well played first half. Other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how'd you like to play? Right. <laughs> No, I'm going to talk to Anna. Our, our quarterback could not be around. We have a new reception. Right, just stay right there. Yeah. Like this, the whole second half. Sure. And I was like, I just know Shark is not going to let him run. Yeah, I was going to say, see, that was the only thing. It's like, if their offensive line can't push him back. Yeah. I, 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 I thought I thought maybe it would be like, that was more than like, like, almost a.
come at tight end, but he's really good shot. And they were worried about this might happen, even if they saw last week. And that's sort of a wing guy. Kenton's offensive line, I thought, was better. I didn't think they could push him out. They didn't 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 push him out. Well, that's true. That, that's the thing. But, and, and, you know, those people well, just punch steps. I mean, like, you know what? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, so, well, at least the, you know, the second half, as I as I talk, it won't be uh, it won't be that long, so that'll be good. But but you you want you watch them. I'm telling you, there's gonna there, there will be there will be taunting and uh, unsportsmanlike and rough and tough. It's it's coming. Out there. Tonight's show with one of the greatest rock songs of all time. It's a it's a building. Right. Right. I mean, they were trying to. <laughs> no, that could pull a Woody, but I feel bad. I feel bad people watch me. I've got dudes in front of me here that don't realize that. That's what I'm And I, and I thanked her for that. I, I, I said to her, I said, no, I really appreciate that. I said, because you never know. Something could happen. So. Stone's not that bad. I mean, they're not great. I mean, but, but good lord. I think took, yeah, yeah, I wonder that too, if that took the starch out of them. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kinston High School Marching Band. Right. Hudson has to play, Stone and Hudson have to play each other, right? Well, see, yeah. How's, uh, how's Aurora doing? I know. I was, I was thinking I, as I was driving, and I think about funny things when you're driving to work, and I start talking about high school football and everything. I'm like, what if we have this, a similar situation to what we had two years ago? Aurora Chardon in a division in a uh, 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 regional final, and St. Edward Medina in a regional final. Keep thinking, just, just, just kind of keep that. 
fight them, and probably now, but how were our numbers when we started? Oh, 
card. Yeah. You're looking at. Yeah, they got 16 rock trims for 120 yards. That's short. 16 for 100. All right, everybody, welcome back to Chardon Memorial Stadium. I'm Dave DiNatale. It is the WKYC Game of the Week. There we go. Hi, everybody. Uh, it has been all Chardon tonight at the half. Hilltoppers 42, Bombers nothing. Chardon went up top early on a 49-yard touchdown pass from quarterback Alex Henry to wide receiver Nathaniel Sulka, and it stayed 7-0 going into the end of the first quarter. And then for Kenston, punter Parker Monday, just doing a normal punt, uh, kicked it on the, to Heath Fetchick, who caught it on the dead run, and took the punt back 65 yards for a touchdown. End of the first, it was 14 to nothing. Kenston turned the ball over four times in the second quarter, or you can say Chardon got four turnovers, however you want to, 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 to put it, and converted all of those uh, turnovers into scores, scored 28 big ones in the second quarter, and have a halftime lead of 42 to nothing. So we will be in running clock mode for the second half. And to be frank, I, I think, as I said, if you're if you're Chardon, you know you're you're trying to just make sure you, you you finish this thing out, don't get any injuries with any key players, and you know move on into to week seven. I think if you're Kenston, you, you just try to figure out how to win the second half because you know the Bombers are still going to be a playoff team. I mean, with given their schedule, what they've got coming up here in the expanded playoffs. The Bombers are a playoff team. There's no question. No question. But you, you're, this is going to help identify what you're going to be between now and when we get into week 11 and, and on. So um, only stats really. To, the, 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 the Berger family here to my left, uh, the, the official stat crew for uh, Kenston, awesome, awesome job. Um, unfortunately, the stats aren't really favorable for the Bombers. Uh, uh, just looking at numbers real quick, 178 yards of total offense for Chardon to 64 for the Bombers. So you'd be like, really? It's 42 to nothing. Well, you've got a fumble recovery for a touchdown. You've got a punt return for a touchdown. Uh, short fields, a lot of short fields tonight have led to where we are. Now, let's look at the scoreboard courtesy of one Mr. Tyler Carey uh, for games outside the area. Um, White Sox, first thing, let's go to high school football in a second. Uh, White Sox lead the Indians one to nothing in the bottom of the fifth, but the good news for the Tribe, Shane Bieber went three perfect innings tonight. Uh, you know, and, and I'm one that would normally say, why are you pitching your ace in a meaningless game, and you know, shut him down for the rest of the year, and don't, and you know, we'll see you in Arizona in, in February. But you know, Bieber wanted to come back and 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 pitch, and it's nice to see him doing well. All right, high school football now in Region Nine. Aurora shutting out Talmadge at the half, twenty-one to nothing. We mentioned the other night with Tyler Carey. I, I look at Aurora, and I thought they had three 
you know, of their last four or five games to go here, you know, they, they had a couple of, uh, of important ones, Talmadge, Barberton, and Highland. Well, they're making quick work of Talmadge right now. Norton at the half on top of Streetsboro, 21-6. to six. I, tell you, I think Norton's for real in that Region 10. I really do. They're playing at a high level. Uh, West Geauga leading Buckeye, 14 to nothing in the second quarter. We've seen both of those teams this year, and I can tell you that's a bit of a surprise. I mean, West G went, ended up you know, going into running clock mode when they beat Parma a, a few weeks ago, but I was impressed with Buckeye. I mean, we, we saw what they did uh, to, to last week against Valley Forge. I mean, you know, Ben Barnes and company. But uh, so far, West G on top of that one, 14 to nothing. Uh, West Holmes leading Worcester 24-16 at the half. Uh, in Region 10, Rocky River on top of Bay, 41-10 to at the half. Pirates having a big night tonight. Lake Catholic and Padua, 7-7 tie in the third quarter. Brush leading Willoughby South at the half, 6-0. Arcs are having a nice season, by the way. It's going under the radar, I think, a little bit. Uh, North Royalton leading Stowe at the half, 21 to six, and Avon Lake. After losing to Berea Mid Park last week, the Shoremen are getting tested tonight against the Midview Middies at the half. Shoremen 14, Middies 14. Um, hard to know what to read. TC and I will talk more about this this week. Hard to know what to read right now into Region Six. Uh, I really do. I would say one thing right now. North Royalton's for real, folks. And I said that earlier. I mean, they're, they're a good football team. They're going to make the playoffs as a legitimate, deserving top eight team, not as a team, you know, getting in because of expansion. I mean, they are a good team. And, you know, they continue to rack up impressive performances after impressive performances. That would be a huge win for the Bears tonight. Just happened to watching uh, as the captains for the two teams are at the 50-yard line, and the officials, I think, telling uh, the two captains to let's try to keep this under control. Cale Doyle, and let's see, who did uh, Chardon had Zoran Vajaklicha uh, out there and just more or less, hey, let's keep it under control, guys. Let's not lose our heads. There was a taunting penalty on sportsmanlike conduct before the end of the half, and it's one thing you see. You're, play, you're playing arch rivals, and one team is really having their way against the other in a game, and that opens things up to problems sometimes. Hopefully that won't be the case in the second half. The one nice thing is, again, uh, as we stay in this over 30-point margin, the clock will be running. Remember, Kenston won the toss and elected to receive. And it made sense. I didn't totally understand what Jeff Grubich was doing there. He, you know, against Chardon, you want to win the battle of keep away. You want to get your offense on the field and let them go to work. And uh, just uh, not much offensively work tonight for the Bombers in that first half anyway, as they were reduced to 64 total yards, 54 on the ground, and 10 through the air and four turnovers, one of which went, led directly to a touchdown. I mean, they all led directly to touchdown, but one of which was a fumble recovery for a touchdown. I mean, and you know, uh, Sean Carr scored two touchdowns. Alex Henry had a touchdown run. Uh, I, mean, I mean, every way that Chardon could you know, kind of impose their will in the first half. They did as Monday's kick will skip between a couple of hilltoppers and go into the end zone for a touchback. And it'll be first and 10 Chardon at their own 20 to start the second half. And because it's a change of possession, that's really the only thing that will stop the clock. That and I think injury timeouts are, I think are the only way we st the clock stops here from here on in. And it is a new quarterback in there. As Alex Henry's night looks like it's over. And on first down, it will be a run to the 25, out to the 30, to the 31, to the 32-yard line. OK, 
Okay. I'm going it, to. It's, it's Zoran Vujakela, I think is how I heard it say. I'm going to make sure I know how to say that. Uh, let's see, I got to write it down. Vujakela. That's how I think the PA announcer said it. Didn't think we'd have to be going deep into the uh, depth charts here in the, this early in the game. Is on the ground, it's going to be Sean Carr. And Carr will take it out to the 35 yard line. And. That will be a gain of three, second down and seven. But uh, it, it, and it makes sense. And we talked about it starting starting uh, the second half. You know, if you're Mitch Hewitt, yeah, you want to you you want to try to clean some things up. That we saw some penalties in the first half of the Hilltoppers. It was not completely clean, but um, there's no reason now to play Henry. I, I don't think you're going to see Sulka or McDonald play both ways. Petty John gets the carry. And no, they'll fake to him, and it's going to be Vujakela on the keeper. And he picks up a yard to the 36-yard line. Ben DeMarco made the tackle for the Bombers from his linebacker spot. Well, they'll set up a third down and five. Just getting in her way here in the second half. Chardon with a dominant performance, leading 42 to nothing. Vujakela. Will give, runs left side, that's Peterson. And Ryan Peterson will be brought down short of the first down. He'll be brought down shy of the 40. And so they'll mark him down at the 39 yard line. And that will set up a fourth down and three. And I think, I think for the first time tonight, we will see the Hilltoppers punt the football. No, I take that back. McDonald punted it one time in the in the first half. That's right. Lucas Simmons and Nick Kowalski will go back deep to receive. And as Alex McDonald will wait at his 25 for the snap. It's a good one. And he gets the kick away. Another high kick. Kowalski will call for the fair catch and make it at his own 28-yard line. Bombers will take over with 9.07 to go in the third quarter. Reminder, head to WKYC.com. On Monday, we will post, eh, usually around noontime, our three nominees for the game of the week. You have 48 hours to cast your vote and uh, have a chance to... Uh, Win, a, win a, a prize from Chick-fil-A, but more importantly for me, you let me know where I'm going to be next Friday night. You can vote again uh, at WKYC.com on our WKYC 3 News app. Also, on, uh, we'll post it on Facebook and on Twitter as well. And we got three good ones. Won't give it away. I think we'll give it away on Sunday night on Sports Tonight with Nick Camino. I could tell you now, but that would that'd spoil the suspense. I don't want to do that. From the 28, Germano on first down, operating out of that Wildcat. Made a nice cut, but then got brought down from behind by Heath Fetchick. Uh, back at the line of scrimmage, back at the 28-yard line, no game. Fetchick's had a good game, not just with that punt return for a touchdown, but he's played terrific from that linebacker spot tonight. Four minutes gone by here in this third quarter in the running clock mode. Hilltoppers 42, Bombers nothing. Kenston facing a second down and 10. Shotgun for Germano. And he'll go on the ground. Sean Patrick started right, cut back left, nowhere to go. Still, I mean, it's been the, the story all night, nowhere to go. And that, that particular tackle was because of the surge from the defensive line. And what it's been doing, it's been allowing the safeties who are pinching up, like Leo Columby, to come up and make a play. With only a gain of one for Patrick. And we've got a official's timeout. Jeff Grubich is five yards on the field. And he just took J.P. Germano out of the game. Now, I don't know if J.P., after that handoff, had gotten shaken up. Or any, or I'm not exactly sure, but Dylan Krupp is now a freshman. He'll take over at quarterback. This is a 
awfully tough situation for anybody. He'll go to Patrick on third down and long, and Patrick will spin at the 30 and go out to the 32-yard line. you got a long way to go in this 2021 season, and Kenston needs J.P. Germano, and they need, you know, whether it's at, at Wildcat quarterback or at wide receiver or at safety or as a punt or kick returner, they need him. And there's a long way to go. And I think that's, you know, Jeff Grubich just gave gave him a pat on the behind. And, uh, you know, it was a long night for everybody on Kenston's offense. And, you know, there will be better day games in this season for J.P. Germano. No doubt about it. Too good of a player. Monday will kick it all, kick it away here on the punt. And end over end. And again, not much hang time. Fetchick on the return to the 45, to the 50. Here he goes again, and finally got tripped up at about the 39-yard line of the Bombers. Otherwise, he would have been gone again. He Fetchick. Wow. You know, he, he's listed as six foot, 190 pounds, and he may indeed be six foot, but it, it's he feels like he's bigger than 190 pounds. He runs bigger as the ball will be spotted at the 40-yard line of the Kenston. And the problem for Parker Monday, he's not the normal punter on this team for Kenston. That normally is Nico uh, Giorgio. And Parker's punts, while they, they've been certainly deep enough, there's not a lot of hang time. He's not used to being a punter. As Petty John gets the carry on first down, and so he'll take it out to the 38, maybe the 37 of the Bombers for a short pickup as we go under six minutes to go in this running clock third quarter. And for Kenston, David Clausen, the defensive end, is shaken up and he will come off the field. Second down four for the Hilltoppers. As Bukalia on the carry and he'll Pick up a first down. He'll cross the 30 and go down to the 28-yard line. Backup quarterback. Spelling Alex Henry, who's done for the evening. That's a first down for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, so this will be now five straight wins. Four straight wins. I can count. <laughs> As Petty John will get the carry. And this time he's going to be brought down behind the line of scrimmage. And we got a late flag after the tackle back at the 30-yard line. That's what I was talking about. It'll be four straight wins going back to 2018. So 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. As the Hilltoppers are backing up. And it looks like that's a holding penalty on the call there, back to the 40-yard line. I still look back, you know, when I think about 2018 and that experience of following the Hilltoppers, but certainly following Kenston. And we were with them about three or four times that year, in, in, including that state championship win. I still believe, as it'll be now a second down and 20. We'll finish that thought in a second. Petty John in motion. Give the ball to him. Breaks the tackle at the 30. Petty John to the 20. Petty John to the 15. Down to the 10. To the 5. And in. Where is the call? Looks like well, this one might be actually coming back. There's a flag down. I think Petty John would have scored the touchdown, but wipe it out. There's a penalty down at the 23 yard line holding Hilltoppers. Mm. Petty, you know, it, it's funny. When I, I look at Daniel Pettyjohn, he wears the same number his brother James did, 27. He runs like a Pettyjohn. I mean, he absolutely, and he's only going to get better. And that's the thing you, you can tell by watching him run. He's going to get better as he continues to get more carries. You know, Carr has been, I mean, Alex Henry, to be honest, has been the, the, the most active ball carrier this year statistically for the Hilltoppers. But... Yeah, Carr and then Petty John. Petty John's going to get better and better, though, as he continues to get reps. Ball back now to the 
Kenston 34. It's a first and 16 after they mark off the penalty. And on the ground, it's Peterson to the 30, Peterson to the 25. And Ryan Peterson will be brought down at the 24-yard line. Got about five on that pickup. It'll be second down and 11. 2.20 to go as the running clock continues here in quarter number three. Kenston, I believe, does not win the 2018 state championship. Maybe they do, but that loss, to, the best thing that could have happened to that team was a loss to Chardon as the Hilltoppers rallied in Kenston at Bomber Stadium to beat them. Is it really refocused that Kenston team the rest of the year? As on second down, Petty John will swing left side. This time he breaks through, takes it to the 21, and then he got pushed back there. Well, no, he's still on his feet. Boy, everybody thought he was down except for Petty John and was able to get extra yardage to about the 19-yard line. That's a fine piece of running, as we said, for Petty John. Kenston ended up going to the postseason in 2018 and just dismantling everybody, including Kettering Alter, 42-6 to in that state championship game. And they actually had fallen behind six to nothing, and there was there was a few moments where they were like, "Oh no, are they in over their heads?" And then Kenston's, especially their offense, that particular game just took over, and Alter had no chance. To be frank, third down and one, and it'll be a keeper for the quarterback. He'll get the first down to the 15-yard line as Buakalia will take it down to the 15. Pick up a four as we go under a minute to play here in the third quarter. And you really think about it, though. These two teams have won two of the last three state championships in Division Three, And no one can ever say, by the by, that, well, it was COVID, it doesn't really count, or, you know, Chardon didn't get to play everybody. Petty John in motion on first down, and he'll get the carry. He'll run left side to the 10 and out of bounds at the 8. Chardon, uh, there's another, Chardon didn't get tested until they got to the state championship game. They obliterated everybody on their schedule last year. And that'll do it for the end of the, the quarter. It'll be uh, a second down coming up here when we come back for the fourth quarter. Um, you know, and we were here early in the playoffs against New Philadelphia, and I mean, Chardon just demolished New Philly that night, thirty-one to nothing. And you know, I, I remember leaving here just thinking defensively, there's, there's not, there, there can't be a team in Division Three defensively that was better than Chardon, and, and that was the case. But offensively, they did what they had to do in crunch time to win. I just look back. I was thinking about this. You know, last year's defense, you know, Sulka and Liebart were starters, but you had Brady Toth, Kevin Doyle, Vince Ferrante, Cade McDevitt, Evan Gardner, Blake Barker, Miles Mendenzoon, and Gavin Slythe. They were such a great unit. And then you, you, you think about that, and then I think about Kenston in 2018 and that offense. You know, John Tom Kufsik, Jack Porter, Tyler Mintz, Jay Middleton. That offensive line that they had, it was absolutely a powerful, dominant offense. And, that's, and their defense was great, too. Don't get me wrong. But uh, that uh, just goes to show you it, it's, uh, you know, whether you're Division One, Two, or Three, it doesn't matter. Elite is elite. And... Uh, I think Chardon, if you take anything away from this, is we're back to action on second down and about five. Chardon is still an elite team. As quarterback will keep it and take it inside the five. Is he in? The fans said yes. Officials say not so fast. I'm going to mark this at about the four-yard line. But it is going to be first and goal. So first and goal from the fours. 
Will Kale takes it in from there, so it'll be first and goal. I think Chardon has answered a lot of questions here. With the way they have just come out tonight and opportunistically took this game away from Kenston in the second quarter as they'll go on the ground. And it's down to the one in. Official says yes. And I'll take that back. Not a touchdown. In's just in, I mean, the nose of the ball is about to touch white. That's how close it is. So, I mean, the PA announcer said second in inches. I thought they were going to call it. It looked like they were initially, but uh, second and goal and inches here. Let's see if Vu Canley just keeps it here. He's going to. He'll keep it and take it in. There it is. Touchdown. Chardon Hilltoppers. Zoran Bukakalia takes it in for the touchdown to make it 48 to nothing. Hilltoppers with 10 13 to go in this football game. You know, earlier on, I was kind of looking at Chardon's schedule, you know, they they kind of loaded up a little bit here. I, I you know, I was impressed with uh, some of the teams that Mitch Hewitt had put on the schedule here for in the in the non-conference um, for Chardon, and uh, they uh, and a lot of the times you do that, you know, you'd like to say, well, yeah, we like we'll take on all comers, but you want the computer points. You're trying to get as many points as you can because you want to be home for as long as you can when get in the playoffs. The extra point is good. We'll have some more scores here from Tyler Carey coming up in a second. Um, but, you know, Chardon really had loaded up the early part of their schedule. And let's see, where was I? I had my schedule in front of me, and then I opened up a different one. You know, they, they played Glenville in week one, beat the Tarp Letters 28 to 14. They had Ursuline in week three, and that was a close game. I mean, they, they, they beat Ursuline 36 to 27. Um, had no problem with Riverside, had no problem with Mayfield, had no problem with Bucktel. Now, interesting, Chardon's going to get um, New Philadelphia next week. They're going to get Willoughby South um, in week nine. And, and to this point, we'll, we'll check on the scores here from TC in a second, but South coming into this hadn't lost yet. So, but that'll be interesting. But, I, I mean, Chardon looks to me like a 10-0 team right now. Uh, Norton continues to lead Streetsboro, although the Rockets have kind of gotten themselves a little closer. 21-12 to now in the third quarter. Aurora shutting out Talmadge 28 to nothing. West Geauga leading Buckeye at the half 14 to 7. Uh, Padua over Lake Catholic 28 to 7. Bruins got off to a really sluggish start. They didn't play well week one against Holy Name, but since then have really put some things together. And another team we're going to have to keep our eyes on here is. Tagger will kick it off, and this is going to head to the end zone for a touchback, 9.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. Kenson will take over at their own 20, trailing 49 to nothing. Uh, let's see, Rocky River on top of Bay in the third quarter, 41 to 10. Willoughby South leading Brush in the fourth quarter, 14 to 6. So Rebels have a chance to go 6 and 0. North Royalton, Stowe has kind of come back into that game a little bit. It's now 21 to 14. Uh, Bears still leading. And Avon Lake and Midview remain tied at 21 now in the third quarter. Here at Chardon Memorial Stadium, all Hilltoppers, the uh, defending state champs in Division Three, shutting out Kenston 49 to nothing as uh, they'll go on the ground on first down and the Bombers continue to have problems running the football. No gain on the play. I think Brandon Bell is now in there at running back. Yeah, Sean Patrick's night is over. Bell was that carrier on that last play. In running clock mode here, under nine minutes to go, fourth quarter. And we have a new quarterback in there, Dylan Krupp, on the ground. And a nice gain on second down as Kenston will take it to the 31-yard line. And 
that time, it was Cohen Clark on the carry. So, I mean, Jeff Grubich is playing some freshman right now. Clark's a freshman. Krupp, the quarterback, a freshman. Valuable playing time. And this time Clark is going to be brought down for no gain. And, and he may actually lose a yard. But, I mean, this is, this is how it starts, though. Like, Ryan, I mean, Ryan Miller, you know, was a starter four years ago as a freshman at tight end. Now, even then, he was still a tall young man. He's 6'6 now. I think he was 6'3 or 6'4 as a freshman, which is unheard of. The chance of overrated, you might be hearing from the uh, Chardon faithful. As looking to throw, and his Krupp fires it right side, and it's incomplete. There was contact on that pass attempt. No uh, flag thrown as it was intended for Carson Rivera Gabo near the 50 yard line. Now set up third and 11. It happened right in front of the Kenston bench, so players and coaches were screaming for an interference. They won't get it. And brings up a third down and 11. Well, I, I, I think now, if we've learned anything from tonight, from what's happening between Aurora and Talmadge and what's happening here, the Hilltoppers and the Greenmen have kind of separated themselves, I think, from everybody else uh, in Division Three, not just in Region 9, I might add. As this time Krupp on the read option is going to get brought down for a loss back at the 25-yard line. Late pushing and shoving. Officials do a good job of separating everybody, and it'll be a fourth down in a punting situation for the Bombers. Yeah, I don't think there's any question right now. I, I, I think, you know, I, I have no idea. You know, if you ask me, you know, who's the best team in Columbus or who's the best team in Cincinnati or, or what have you, you know, I can't answer that for you. What I can tell you is you'd be hard-pressed right now to find two teams in Division Three better than Aurora and Chardon. They met in the regional final two years ago as Monday gets the punt away. Again, a line drive kick. Nobody back deep to receive for Chardon, which is, I guess, kind of a surprise. It'll roll to a dead stop at the 36-yard line of the Hilltoppers, and they'll start there. Chardon got off to a big lead in that regional final and ended up letting Aurora back in it, and the Green Men ended up winning that game and then lost the week after uh, against Mansfield, I believe it was, uh, in the state semis. Otherwise, you very easily could have had a scenario of Kenston, Aurora, and Chardon as your three state champions back-to-back-to-back. As Hilltoppers were on the ground on first down as we are approaching five minutes to go in the football game. Sharon about to go to 6-0. Kenston will drop to 5-1 as that ball will go to the 41-yard line. And we have a third new quarterback in the game. And let's see here. I'm going to study my, uh, boy, I don't know who that is. Really got to dig into the air roster to find the quarterback. He's wearing a 38, I think, or 35, as the Hilltoppers will take this ball inside the 50 and go down to the Bomber 47-yard line. I think it's Austin Lisinski. He's wearing 35, and he's a quarterback. I love it. It's like when... Uh, Otto Graham used to wear number 60. He was 14 once he got to the NFL, but at one point he was wearing number 60 at quarterback. 35. I love it. <laughs> Three approach, four minutes to go in the game. First and 10 for the Hilltoppers. As Chardon will be put down this time. And we got a late flag again. I thought we had done better on that, but apparently not. Personal foul is the call, and I think we had somebody in there for the Bombers deliver a late hit after the ball carrier was down. So 
So it will go from the midfield to the 35-yard line of Kenston. Officials is trying to get us out of here without any more issues. And quarterback Austin Lazinski on the ground gives to Braden Maruna. And Maruna we put down at about the 34. WKYC Game of the Week is always presented to you by Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is the home of the original chicken sandwich. Stop by your neighborhood Chick-fil-A. Find them in Northeast Ohio, Cleveland, Akron, and Canton. And Lisinski will give to the man swinging right side. It's another Vukajalia. It's time Drago, which is probably one of the better Vuyaklia. By the time we see them again, I'll know how to pronounce it. Vuyaklia. Drago Vuyaklia. It's one of the best football names you will ever hear. And Zoran Vuyaklia got a touchdown earlier in this football game, getting some playing time. as the Hilltoppers will do the Atlanta Braves slash Florida State chop. And so go on the ground with the Hilltoppers down to the 26-yard line. And yet another new running back, Ben Petrella, getting that carry. So under two minutes to go. Petrella takes it to the 21-yard line. Yeah, and Mitch Hewitt's just basically trying to Run this clock out. We haven't seen any trick plays, anything like that. Satisfied with the way, I mean, how can you not be satisfied with the way his team has played tonight? Just uh, a dominant performance, particularly in that second quarter, forcing four turnovers and converting all of them into touchdowns for 28 points, essentially converting all of them. I think one of the interceptions was at the end of the half, but, I mean, essentially every turnover felt like it came back to haunt and matter of fact, Mitch Hewitt kind of looking at the clock now uh, will go into uh, victory formation mode as Lisinski will hit to a knee. This might be the fastest finish time we've ever had in our four years of the high school game of the week. I mean, my clock has us at 9.02, and we're about to wrap this thing up. When you have two running teams and a running clock, this is ultimately what happens. So again, Kenston, or, or Chardon, I should say, will be on the road. Long road trip for them next week to go down to New Philadelphia in a playoff rematch. Kenston will uh, be on the road again next week as to a knee again is Austin Lisinski, and that's going to do it. The Chardon Hilltoppers, in dominant fashion, Hang a 49 to nothing shutout win on their arch rival Kenston Bombers as Mitch Hewitt and Jeff Grubich shake hands. This was an absolute dominating performance by the Hilltoppers against the team that had been the number one team in Region 9 coming into the night's game, the Bombers. Kenston will close out the season, their final four games, at Madison. Two weeks from tonight, they'll be home against Willoughby South. South is going to, you know, again, in this Western Reserve, they'll play a role in the, into what happens, even though they're in a different division. Uh, Kenston will then be home to Riverside to take on the Beavers. And then uh, their traditional Week 10 opponent normally has been and will be again this year, Mayfield. Uh, Wildcats having a tough year. It had been winless coming into tonight. So, uh, But there are a lot of wins there as you look for Kenston on the schedule. And... You, know, you sit there and you go, yeah, 9-1, and 8-2 and two is possible. And, you know, they're going to have to shake this off, and they're going to have to shake this one off very, very quickly. But Jeff Grubich is a very good coach, and that's, that's what he does. But uh, tonight, Kenston had no answers for the onslaught that faced them from Chardon as uh, 
it really started, again, in, with five seconds to go in the first quarter in a 7 nothing game. Chardon leading. It was the Hilltoppers, Heath Fetchick, taking a 65-yard punt back for a touchdown to close out this, the first quarter and to give the Hilltoppers a 14-0 lead. Well, you think, okay, no problem. You got a long way to go. Chardon forced four Kenston turnovers in the second quarter and scored 28 points and ended up leading 42 to nothing at the half and went on to win 49 to nothing here at Chardon Memorial Stadium. And uh, again, I think the message is going to be sent far and wide tonight, not just to the Western Reserve Conference, not just to Kenston, and not just to Division Three Region 9, but to the entire state in Division Three that the defending champs are going to be a tough out as they defend their crown. They, they had every look tonight of a team that feels like they can go right back to Stark County. Last year it was in Maslin. This year back where it belongs at uh, Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. And they look like a team that can go right back there and defend their state championship uh, in Canton. They're that good. Um, Kenston, on the other hand, it will be interesting to see when Nico Giorgio gets back to quarterback and J.P. Germano can return to his normal wide receiver position, how that will impact this offense. Giorgio, before he had the hand injury, had 557 yards passing and five touchdowns in roughly three games. Uh, and had rushed for 119 yards and scored four touchdowns. So that's a major part of the offense that you haven't had for these last three games. Germano did a great job in wins against East Lake North and Lake Catholic. Obviously tonight, the Hilltoppers were ready for the Wildcat. They were ready for Germano and did what they had to do to shut him down. But when Giorgio gets back and... Kenston can have some semblance of some normalcy in their offense. We'll, we'll see what they can do. I mean, I, I'd love to see, you know, boy, if they could have Nico Giorgio and have Ryan Miller, you know, we might have a, a totally different conversation. I'm not saying that, that the, the Bombers would have won tonight. I'm not saying anything of the sort. But it would just be interesting to see uh, a Kenston team with those two weapons on offense. But... Uh, that's not the case, and, and Chardon was dominant tonight. And uh, that took us to this final score of 49 to nothing. We remind you, uh, at WKYC.com, this game story, Tyler Carroll will be writing it for you, but you can also check out the scoreboard, our, our running scores uh, from games all across the area tonight, and uh, track your favorite team. And again, we'll be back with you uh, at WKYC.com. Our app, Facebook, and YouTube on Monday with our nominees for week seven. All right, ready? Week number seven. As uh, we'll enter into October football next Friday, uh, we'll have our three nominees. I think they're all, you know, I think they're all, I always think they're good games. You know, you never know what, what's going to happen. Certainly didn't expect this tonight. Um, and we'll have three good ones for you, and uh, we'll be somewhere next Friday night um, for week number seven. Hopefully uh, we will not have another running clock, but uh, things like this happen, and uh, Chardon was uh, outstanding tonight, and uh, it was no fluke. 49 to nothing, the Hilltoppers with the victory to improve to 6-0. and oh. All right, that's going to do it for us here at Chardon Memorial Stadium. Thank you very much here. We'll uh, let you... Uh, See us here. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll uh, see you back uh, also Wednesday. Remember, Tyler Carey and I will uh, have our show at uh, WKYC.com. We also throw it on YouTube to let you know where we're going to go. Don't want to miss that as well. That's always uh, a lot of fun. You get Tyler's top five and our look around with teams in the area. For the aforementioned TC Tyler Carey and everybody involved, I'm Dave DiNatale. Again, your final tonight here from Chardon Memorial Stadium, the Hilltoppers, 49 and the Kenston Bombers nothing. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, everyone, and have a great night.